Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord of all power and might, the author and giver of all good things, graft in our hearts the love of your name. Increase in us true religion. Nourish us with all goodness. And bring forth in us the fruit of good works. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. The first reading comes from, the ch from chapter 3 of Exodus. Moses was keeping the flock of his father-in-law Jethro, the priest of Midian. He led his flock beyond the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire out of a bush. He looked, and the bush was blazing, yet it was not consumed. Then Moses said, I must turn aside and look at this great sight and see why the bush is not burned up. When the Lord saw that he had turned aside to see, God called to him out of the bush, Moses, Moses. And he said, here I am. Then he said, come no closer, remove the sandals from your feet for the place of, on which you are standing is holy ground. He said further, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look at God. Then the Lord said, I have observed the misery of my people who are in Egypt. I have heard their cry on account of their taskmasters. Indeed, I know their sufferings, and I have come down to deliver them from the Egyptians and to bring them up out of that land to a good and broad land, a land flowing with milk and honey, to the country of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Hiv Hivites, and the Jebusites. The cry of the Israelites has now come to me. I have also seen how the Egyptians oppress them. So come, I will send you to Pharaoh to bring my people, 
the Israelites out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? He said, I will be with you, and this shall be the sign for you that it is I who sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you shall worship God on this mountain. But Moses said to God, If I come to the Israelites and say to, the, to, to them, The God of your ancestors has sent me to you, and they ask, you, ask me, What is his name? What shall I say to them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. He said further, Thus you shall say to the Israelites, I am has sent me to you. God also said to Moses, Thus you shall say to the Israelites, The Lord, the God of your ancestors, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my name forever, and this my title for all generations. The word of the Lord. The psalm for today is from Psalm 105. We will read responsibly by whole verse. Give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the peoples. Sing to him, sing praises to him, and speak of all his marvelous works. Glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Search for the Lord and his strength. Continually seek his face. Remember the marvels he has done his wonders and the judgments of his mouth. O offspring of Abraham, his servant, O children of Jacob, his chosen. Israel came into Egypt, and Jacob became a sojourner in the land of Ham. The Lord made his people exceedingly fruitful. He made them stronger than their enemies. Whose heart he turned so that, he, so that they hated his people and dealt unjustly with his servants. He sent Moses, his servant, and Aaron, whom he had chosen. Hallelujah. The second reading is from Romans. Let love be genuine. Hate what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not lag in zeal. Be ardent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in suffering. Persevere in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints extend hospitality to strangers bless those who persecute you bless and do not curse them rejoice with those who rejoice weep with those who weep live in harmony with one another do not be haughty but associate with the lowly do not claim to be wiser than you are do not repay anyone evil for evil but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all if it is possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave room for the wrath of God. For it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. No, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. For by doing this, you will heap burning coals on their heads. 
Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. The word of the Lord. Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and undergo great suffering at the hands of the elders and chief priests and scribes, and be killed, and on the third day be raised. Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, God forbid it, Lord. This was never happened to you. But he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. Then Jesus told his disciples, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it. And those who lose their life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit them if they gain the whole world but forfeit their life? Or what will they give in return for their life? For the Son of Man is to come with his angels in the glory of his Father. And then he will repay everyone for what has been done. Truly, I tell you, there are some standing here who will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. The Gospel of the Lord. I speak to you in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good morning. The Old Testament reading today relates Moses' journey beyond the wilderness. 
It's a story that links him to his people's past, in particular to God's covenant with Abraham and his offspring. And it also foreshadows the Israelite people's flight from bondage in Egypt and their journey in the wilderness, where God reveals himself to them in a variety of ways. Vicky's telling me, it's on, Vicky. <laughs> okay, I'll use the other microphone. It's okay, I can use this one. So today's passage begins by locating Moses in the land of the Midians. Now, the land of the Midians is in the area of Sinai, the pen peninsula that's just east Egypt and across the Red Sea into Palestine. Um, and the Midian people were the offspring of Abraham and his second wife, Keturah, whom he had after Sarah had passed away. So they're also Abrahamic people. The book of Exodus begins by locating Israelites in Egypt, where they had resided for many generations. And the name Israelites is, of course, not referring to a nation at this point, but to the offspring of Israel. And Israel was the name that God gave to Jacob after he wrestled with him. Jacob had 12 sons, and among them was Levi, who was one of the ancestors of Moses. We're told in last week's reading that his father, Moses' father and mother, were both Levites. So these offspring... Um, were in Egypt, and over time they multiplied. And under the new Pharaoh, the Egyptians, I quote, became ruthless in imposing tasks, and they made their lives bitter with hard service in mortar and brick and in every kind of field labor. The Israelites groaned under slavery, and they cried out, and God looked upon the Israelites and took notice of them. Their cries for help rose up to God, who heard their groaning and remembered his covenant with Abraham. So last week we heard how Moses, whose name means drawn from the water, was rescued as a baby, first by the Hebrew midwives and then by Pharaoh's daughter, who drew him out of the Nile and raised him as her own. Today, we find Moses in the wilderness at Mount Horeb. And the word Horeb means dry. So to understand how Moses went from being a prince along the Nile to shepherding in the wilderness, I think it's helpful to fill in a story that the lectionary omits, which falls between last week's and this week's reading. As I read the first two verses of the story, I invite you to notice the abundant references to sight. So this follows upon last week's reading where Moses was taken out of the water. One day after Moses had grown up, he went out to his people and he saw their forced labor. He saw an Egyptian beating a Hebrew, one of his own people. And he looked this way and that, and seeing no one, he killed the Egyptian and hid him in the sand. Word of this, a word of this killing gets around. Pharaoh hears, and he wants to kill Moses. Moses flees and settles in the land of Midian. And one day he comes to a well where seven sisters have come to draw water. They're being hassled by some shepherds. Moses protects the women, and their father gives one of them, Zipporah, to Moses to be his wife. They have a son whom they name Gershom. Ger is Hebrew for stranger or sojourner or alien. And his name means a stranger there. I think that the name seems to characterize Moses more than it does the boy. And I wonder which land he's referencing. Is it the land of the Midians where he's in exile? 
Or is it Egypt where his people are enslaved? Or maybe wherever Moses goes, he is not at home. Like the patriarchs Abraham and Jacob and Joseph, Moses is formed by a journey to a foreign land where he resides as an alien. And it is there that God reveals himself in a special way. I think that this backstory is important in providing context and, and traits that play a role in how Moses ended up in the wilderness and in his encounter with God and in his commissioning. In Midian lands and beyond in the wilderness, he arrives at Mount Horeb, which is another name for Mount Sinai. And as he's tending sheep, an angel appears to him in a flame of fire out of a burning bush that is not consumed. Now, in the book of Genesis, there are several times when a being appears who is identified as an angel, but turns out to be the voice of God. So for example, when Abraham receives three visitors, they speak in the first person as God. Or when Abraham and Isaac are on the mountain and Abraham is going to sacrifice his son, again, an angel appears, but it's actually the voice of God. When Jacob wrestles with what appears to be a man, might be an angel, in the end it seems to be he was wrestling with God himself. So here God appears in the form of a flame, which seems to foreshadow God's presence in the form of a pillar of fire by night that leads the Israelites as they later wander in the wilderness. In this story that we heard today, what I find especially intriguing are these internal dialogues of Moses and of God. At one point, Moses says, when he sees the flame, I must turn aside and look at this great sight and see why the bush is not burned up. Again, notice all those seeing words. And Moses seems to make a conscious decision to look and investigate. So he kind of sees this burning and thinks, I must turn aside and look at this great sight. The wording has me wondering whether other shepherds or merchants may have walked right past the burning bush and not really taken notice or maybe caught a glimpse of it and walked away. This defining trait of Moses that he sees, he turns to look, is also central to God in this story. God had, quote, looked upon the Israelites and took notice of them. We're told that God sees that Moses turned aside to see the bush. And when God commissions Moses, he begins by stating, I have observed the misery of my people. And he goes on to say that he has also heard their cries and he knows their suffering and he has come to deliver them. This is a God who has compassion for those who are oppressed, and he acts. He has come to rescue. And the ordinary, dusty ground of the wilderness is made holy by his presence. I wonder whether the author of Exodus is suggesting a parallel between the powerful effect of divine presence on the earth and in people's lives. When God tells Moses that he is sending him as an emissary, there is no suggestion that Moses has any exceptional gifts or strengths that we associate with leaders. Moses is resistant. He doesn't feel like he's up to the task. He asks, who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? And God does not answer this question directly, but rather he explains how Moses will be able to fulfill his call. I will be with you. 
Just as dry and dusty wilderness becomes holy ground through God's presence, Moses is called to holy work. He's called from shepherding livestock to leading people out of captivity. He is empowered to embark on this immensely difficult task of leader, liber, liberation and leadership because God is with him. Moses does not have extraordinary powers, but he does notice injustice and he defends those without power. And here he notices the flames and he lingers long enough to wonder. I think this is how he gets signed up for this job. Some ancient rabbis compared God at this moment to someone who is carrying a heavy load and is about to collapse when he suddenly sees someone is standing by that has noticed and calls out, quick, help me out. The idea is that God is calling out for help from the burning bush. Help to carry the load of the suffering and the oppressed. And it is Moses' willingness to turn aside from business as usual that moves God to speak. Today's story invites us to consider how we might respond when we are witnesses to injustice and oppression. Biblical stories and our life experiences suggest that God is continually calling out for help, help to carry the load of the suffering of the oppressed. How will we respond to this call? In a poem by Denise Levertoff, she reflects on the angel Gabriel appearing to Mary. And Levertoff suggests that in most lives, the divine appears to engage us in his work. But too often, these opportunities are rejected, often because we don't feel like we're up to it. Here's an excerpt. She says that while some people will take on these calls, more often those moments when roads of light and storm open from darkness in a man or woman, they're turned away from in dread, in a wave of weakness, in despair, and in relief. Ordinary lives continue. God does not smite them, but the gates close, the pathway vanishes. The work of liberation takes place in countless ways and on different social scales. Moses is called to lead people subjected to unjust labor, and that need persists in our time. Let's remember that as we celebrate Labor Day this weekend. But oppression also infuses lives in more mundane ways, in loneliness, for example, among our neighbors and strangers. Moses' story invites us to ask where each of us, with all of our feelings of inadequacy, is being called to the work of countering oppression. And where we catch glimpses of divine light of burning bushes, assuring us of God's presence that will enable us to do this labor. Amen. Let us stand and affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. 
Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Prayers of the people will follow form three. Praise now as you are able. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. That we all may be one. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons that they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. That there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest that light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. We offer prayers for our families. Doug and Kathy Gorney, Beth Graboritz, Jay, Jill, Cody, and Hope Hanchi, Rick, Stephanie, Clara, and Hannah Haverla. We offer prayers for our military and their families. Eric, Robbie, Anthony, Anna Marie, Vincent, Brian, Beth, Grant, Patrick, Jonathan, Walter, Justin, Cameron, Adrian, Brad, Cody, Josh, Ben, David, Kevin, Jerry, and Luke. We offer prayers for our college students, Colin, Karen, John, Kelsey, Zach, Virginia, AJ, Ben, Kristen and Joe, let us say together the prayer for Trinity. Heavenly Father, Father, we we thank thank you for calling us into your service. service. Our Our mission mission is to invite invite others others to be a part of our our community, community, inspiring them to have a deep and abiding relationship with you and to to serve all in your name. Help Help us to respond to that that call wholeheartedly and lead us boldly into the future. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God. We We confess confess that that we have have sinned against against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have have left undone. undone. We have have not loved loved you with with our whole heart. heart. We have have not loved our neighbors neighbors as ourselves. ourselves. We We are truly truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the, the sake, sake of your, your Son, Son, Jesus Christ, have, have mercy on us and, us and forgive us, that, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen.
Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Please stand. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Good morning. Good to see you all this morning. Hope you have a nice Labor Day, relaxing day, because it's September and we're kind of restarting the church here. So all kinds of stuff is going on. There's a bunch of um, announcements in your bulletin. Take it home, spend some time with it. In particular, there is a calendar in there of upcoming events. You may want to put that and sync it with your home calendar, your personal calendar, so you can just plan on attending things. So all kinds of things like, for example, next week is Grandparents' Day. So we are going to celebrate the grandparents. If you have your grandchildren in the area and you can bring them to church with you, please do. If you have your grandparents in the area and can bring them to church with you, please do. If they're not in the area, bring a photo. It'll be great because we're going to pray for everybody. We're going to share pictures. We're going to talk about our wonderful uh, children in our lives and our grandparents in our lives and be thankful for the grandparents that we have. So that's that's next week. Um, and we have all kinds of other things, including um, uh, things going on with serving at the DRC on the 11th. We have backpack blessings that is starting up again where we're serving um, meals to the kids at Deep Run Elementary. We have a um, tailgate party on the calendar. So you come and you show up in your favorite team jersey and we're going to have a picnic. It's going to be a great day. Like all kinds of stuff. So mark your calendar um, to have some fun together this fall. We're going to have a great time. Um, also on the 17th, uh, our, our adult study is restarting. We are going to be reading together Margaret Gunther's The Practice of Prayer, which will answer all of your questions that you have ever had about prayer. <laughs> all of them. <laughs> that's, that's the goal. Um, I've ordered the books. I don't have them in yet. They haven't come in yet. I was hoping they'd be here by this Sunday, but I'll have them available for you. For, for next week, um, we're going to just read a, a chapter or so at a time. Um, but if you'd like to join us, please do. And if you want to download the book, um, the information about the book is in tidbits and in the bulletin. Um, any questions about anything? Okay, easy. Great. How about birthdays in the coming week? Or wedding anniversaries? Okay, easy breezy. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God.
lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and give God and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For you are the source of light and life. You made us in your image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. and gracious Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he'd given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit, to be for your people the body and blood of your Son the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. These are the gifts of God, for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him.
That's right. You're quite all right. It's been a minute. <laughs> That's right. Take one of those up. You just bring one of those. Body and blood of our Lord. Like that. Yep. How about saying something? Here? Sorry. Blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, keep me everlasting life. Body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, keep me everlasting life. Body of Christ, the bread of heaven. 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 You want to dip? Up a cup for me. Body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, keep you in everlasting life. Thank you. Body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, keep you in everlasting life. Body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Body of Christ, the bread of heaven. the bread of heaven. Body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, keep you in everlasting life. Body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be among you this day and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.
Alleluia, alleluia. Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Yep, same thing. Also, I should have announced, I, it's in the bulletin, but we don't have a coffee hour host today. So there's not coffee hour. We did brew a pot, so there's one on if you want to get a cup of coffee and chat, but don't have a high expectations. All right. <laughs> Bye, babe. Thank you, Mary. You're welcome. Bye, Rich. You guys have a good week. Have a good time at soccer. <laughs> yes, I intend to. <laughs> Oh, Judy, your phone's off. You're muted. Yeah, Juju, you're muted. Bye, Mary. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Have a good time. Okay. I'll, I'll catch a big one. It. I'm going for it. Okay, bye. Bye, bye everybody.